Hello, I'm Hamish and I currently work in professional services as an academy consultant. Um, today I'm going to demonstrate some tips and tricks for adding and visualizing data in ArcGIS Pro. Um, I'm going to start off by discussing what I mean by visualization and why it's so important. And then using the field as, of public health as a backdrop, I'm going to jump into some demonstrations where I'll look at creating charts and time series in ArcGIS Pro using data from a variety of sources. So let's dive straight in. So first of all, what is visualization and why is it important? Well, visualization is a graphical representation of data, whether that be using a graph, chart or a map. Um, visualizing data well can help with data exploration. It also allows a greater understanding of analysis products and can help break down complex patterns into understandable results. In addition to this, it allows us to communicate our findings to a wider audience in a clear and effective manner. For example, the John Hopkins dashboard shown on the right of the slide. So given that public health has become such an important topic in recent times, I'm going to focus on it for my demonstrations today. Um, one of the earliest and perhaps overused examples of GIS in the public health and epidemiology realm is the cholera map created by Dr. John Snow um, in 1854. Um, this map was used to visualize disease clusters and their proximity to water pumps and is a great example of how good visualizations can aid communication. Uh, a recent literature review also found that in modern times, the main applications of GIS in health and epidemiology are disease surveillance, health risk analysis, health access and planning and community profiling. Um, and the review also found that GIS can vastly improve uh, the quality and efficiency of health research. So let's take a look at how effective visualization techniques um, can be used in this realm in ArcGIS Pro. So earlier today I downloaded some data from the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation. Uh, these data included some polygons which show data zone geographies and their associated data zone codes as an attribute field. I also downloaded an Excel spreadsheet with no spatial element, but data zone codes and associated deprivation indicators, including health, education, access to services, crime, and housing. So we can see on the data tab here that we have a field with data zone codes, and then the associated indicators are shown in the rest of the Excel document. The data zones currently shown on screen are small areas in Scotland with roughly equal populations. Uh, they've been constructed to try and best represent physical boundaries and natural uh, communities. They have irregular shapes and contain households with similar co social characteristics. I downloaded these data in shapefile format from the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation website. Um, but shapefiles are a pretty dated format, so I'm going to bring these data into a file geodatabase which offers faster performance. So on the screen now is ArcGIS Pro. And all I'm going to do to bring these data across is to right click my file geodatabase um, and then select import. I'm then going to select feature class and this will bring up the feature class to feature class tool. And then what I need to do is select my input features give the output feature class a name and select run on the tool. So if I navigate to the shape file and then select that and then give this the output name of my choosing and then we'll hit run. And this data is automatically added to the map. So on the screen now you can see my CSV um, with deprivation uh, indicator values within it. Um, and one of the key health indicators that the CSV I downloaded contains is emergency stays in the hospital. Um, and this is represented as a standardized ratio, meaning that it takes into account underlying differences in the age and sex between data zones. So to visualize these data in ArcGIS Pro, I'm going to create a join between the spatial data that we have and the CSV containing the indicator values. So the first thing that I need to do is bring that CSV into my file geodatabase as a table. So again, I'm going to right click, go to import. This time I'm going to select table um, and then I'll need to navigate to the table and then give that an output name just as I did previously. 
So here we can see I'm selecting the CSV file. I'm going to give this an output name of indicator values and then select run. Again, this is automatically added to the map. So now that both these uh, items are in my table of contents, I'm going to create a join. Um, so to do this, I'm going to select my um, data zone geographies in the table of contents, right click, go to joins and relates and select add join. So for our join, we'll need uh, two fields, one from each table and each one should contain uh, the same information essentially. So let's open up our attribute tables quickly. And we'll see that our geographies have a field called data zone, which contains the data zone codes. And then let's open up the table for the indicator values. And again, as we saw in the CSV, there's a field here called data underscore zone with those values within it. So let's select these for our input fields. You can see it automatically selects data zone as the output field. So then let's hit run. And the, the join has been created. So one thing to bear in mind after that join is created is that if either of these items in your table of contents are removed, uh, because the join is temporary and in memory, uh, the join will be uh, deleted along with the item removed from your table of contents. So now that the data has been added, we need to symbolize it. So if we right click our geography data and go to symbology, um, we can use graduated colors to quickly symbolize. So I'm just going to increase the number of classes a little bit to allow a bit better, uh, more distinguishable um, visualization between the different values. And then I'm going to apply this to the fill and the outline. And if we do a quick visual assessment, after changing the field to the emergency admissions values, just let that load up, we'll see that we see sort of particularly high numbers of emergency emissions around places like Glasgow. Um, there's some in Dundee over here um, and up in Aberdeen as well. So taking this a step further, we can use chart functionality in ArcGIS Pro to help show patterns in the data. Um, and this could provide grounds for us to carry out further research. So to access chart functionality, um, first of all, I'm gonna select um, the layer of interest in our table of contents, which is our data zone layer. Um, and we can then do one of two things. So we can right click and select create chart, or you'll also see that a contextual tab appears in the ribbon at the top. And if we go to data and then create chart, we'll see that there's a number of options there. So in this case, we want to create a scatter plot and we can choose any of the attributes associated with our data set for the X and Y values. So in this case, let's select no qualifications for the X value. Uh, and this is just the standardized ratio of people at working age with no qualifications. And let's select emergency stays in hospital. So what we've symbolized Y for our by for our Y value. You see this chart's automatically generated. And we can instantly see an R squared value of 0.64, um, which could prompt for further stats testing and investigation um, to prove or disprove statistical significance. So in ArcGIS Pro, we can also add an extra dimension to the scatter plot by selecting use layer colors. So for example, if we go back to symbology and symbolize our layer by income count, oh, not employment count. So we symbolize our layer by in income count um, and then go back to our chart properties and select use layer colors. Um, it appears from the graph that lower levels of attainment seem to correspond to income deprivation. Um, 
so in addition to this, we can also select view extent. So if I just lower that graph down a bit, and what this does is it only shows the data that's in the view extent. So you can again use this as a bit of a further exploratory tool if you perhaps wanted to, to find an area of study, an area that you wanted to particularly focus on. And you'll see that the R squared value changes on the fly as well. So finally, to conclude the section on charts, um, we can also select the, uh, we can export the chart as graphic files. So either SVG, PNG or JPEG by selecting the export button here. Um, and this functionality is a huge advantage associated with using ArcGIS Pro. So if you're, if you're looking to use this functionality in ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS dashboards offer a similar functionality, but it's not um, as advanced or equivalent to that in ArcGIS Pro. So another visualization tool in ArcGIS Pro is the use of time series. Um, Esri recently did a great visualization on COVID-19 and how this spread across the US. So they produced a graphic, which you can see now, which showed how the number of cases in each state increased over time. I mentioned earlier in my introduction that one of the main uses of GIS in health and epidemiology is disease surveillance. So now I'm going to show you how to recreate this visualization um, for the UK using freely available data. So the first thing to note here, again, is that we're going to be using an in-memory join to access data in a related table. Um, but this time I've downloaded data on the number of COVID-19 cases recorded per day from data.gov.uk. And if we open up the CSV, which you can see on the screen now, we can see uh, daily records on confirmed and cumulative cases. So cumulative lab confirmed cases associated with uh, area codes and area names. And as with the previous demo, I've also downloaded a data set containing geographies for, uh, to use in the join. Um, and in this case, I've downloaded OS Boundary Line, um, which is also available in the Living Atlas, but I want it stored locally in a file geodatabase so that we aren't doing an in-memory join on a data set that's hosted online as this could cause slower performance. So let's quickly create the join. Uh, the process of importing the data into ArcGIS Pro is the same as I showed previously, so I'm not gonna show that again. Um, but this time to create a join, we're going to use the fields corresponding to area code. So if we right click our unitary regions, uh, go to joins and relates and add join. We're gonna use code here and then area code and select run. Now we can see that data loading up. And there we go, the join's been created. So now that the join has been created, what we need to do is enable time on the layer for our time series. Um, so if we do this, uh, we need to right click the layer, go to properties, and then you'll see the time tab down here. Um, and this will give you two options. And in this demo, we only have one time field available to us. So we're going to select each feature has a single time field. And we can see that that field is from our join table and its specimen date. It will automatically calculate the time extent for you. I'm going to set the time zone to my local computer time zone and select OK. What we'll then see is that uh, when unitary regions in our table of contents is highlighted, a contextual tab called time will appear. And if we select the clock in the top left, this will then enable time for the layer and allow us to cycle through. So before cycling through, what, would, what it would be best to do is actually symbolize uh, the data by the number of cumulative cases so that we can then see how these change over time. So let's go to symbology again and go to graduated colors and select cumulative lab confirmed cases. And again, I'm just going to increase the number of classes just so that we can get a bit of a better visualization and a bit more distinguishable difference between the different uh, values. So now let's select play and observe the result. So the first thing to notice here um, is that the data we've downloaded has some missing data information. Um, that's just the nature of the CSV. So the time series is slightly patchy to start with, and you can see a few 
patches appear towards the end of it as well but all in all it looks looks pretty tidy um and if we sort of then sort of interrogate the results a little bit so if i'll just let it run through and then i'll pause it and we can see if we pause it there that as we start to cycle through the time series we there's some areas where the infection rate starts to increase first of all so in this case it looks like uh, london and then if we go over to the west coast we've got birmingham um, and more centrally we've got sheffield there um, and then cycling further through so let's press play again and then pause it um, so we can see as we cycle further through that areas like County Durham uh, up in the north and Liverpool also have an increased number of cases. So there are a few things to bear in mind with this join. Um, because it's only in memory, if you would like to retain it after the data has been removed from your map, you'll need to right click the layer on which the join was created and export the features. Um, but you can also, uh, after you've done this, then share the data to ArcGIS Online and use the time cap capabilities there if you want to. Um, you can't time enable a layer based on a relationship class. So to summarize, really, this technique can be help uh, can be can help us understand areas where pandemics originate and can also show where cases are increasing most rapidly, um, which can aid us in putting together combative measures. So now just to summarize overall quickly what we've covered today. So not only have we seen some useful visualization techniques, not just pro, but we've also highlighted the fact that we can make links to non-geo-enabled data using joins. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation um, and any others that you watch. And if you have any questions regarding what you've seen today, uh, please just get in touch.